It's been a minute. I've been doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes, like off camera for Artist Wheels, which is our very own wheel brand, if you didn't know. But I got asked to hop back in for some more videos. And you know what? I couldn't say no. I missed you guys. So I'm here and we're going to talk about some cool things today. So there are a lot of reasons as to why people prefer or tend to gravitate towards rear wheel drive cars. I think it'll forever be an ongoing argument as to whatever drivetrain is best, whether it's rear wheel drive, front wheel drive, all wheel drive. Either way, people have their own preferences and that's totally fine. Each have their own benefits, which we actually covered a while back in a video a little while ago, talking about the pros and cons of all three platforms. But today we aren't here to argue which is better or which is worse. If you're watching this, you're more than likely dead set on a rear wheel drive platform already and are looking to see what's out there right now for an affordable price, which in today's world can be a pretty daunting task. It should be no surprise that the used car market is absolutely insane right now, especially for us enthusiasts looking for enthusiast cars. And if that is a surprise, let me be the first to break it to you that that SR20 swapped S13 that's on its 15th owner and just needs the motor like installed and the crack dash replaced really isn't worth you know typically fifteen thousand dollars but that's what they're going for no we're here today because even though the world is crazy and the market's out of control you can still find some absolute gems out there so we thought we compile a list of some of the best rear wheel drive cars that are under five thousand dollars or less that you can go and snag right now Before we hop into all that, real quick, 12 days of deals, now live. We got a deal going live every single day. Every day unwraps a new deal. And of course, our S2000 giveaway is coming to an end really, really quick. So if you want to win a rear wheel drive car that you don't have to go spend like 30 grand on now, I think S2000s are going for, you have the chance to win one. You can check it out at fitmentindustries.com. Anyway, right, so let's get on with the first car of the list. I know back in the day, it was like five years ago or so, older BMWs were getting like insanely popular. You were seeing them everywhere. I mean, hell, even we scooped up an E30 and did some fun things with it because we were just bitten by the bug. However, just like everything else, those prices have started to really increase over the last couple of years, especially for a really clean one. Even the prices of E36 have increased well over five grand. But don't fret just yet because if you are still looking for a fun rear wheel drive, NA straight six BMW, you can still find some around. We're talking specifically about the E46 generation 330CI. Rear wheel drive sports coupe available in a three liter straight six and manual transmission. Pretty much the next step before you get to the M3 of that year. The 330CI of the E46 generation, they look absolutely incredible. You get a three liter straight six versus a 2.5 M54 or 2.5. 0.8 M52, which is going to produce roughly around 225 horsepower or so, which is a nice little bump over the other models. Even though the E46 generation weighs a little more than the previous E36, it does come with some extra benefits to that added weight. Overall strength, that chassis is claiming to be about 70% more rigid than the E36, which helps make the car feel more planted and responsive. Also makes you think 70% is quite a bit of an increase. And was the E36 really that bad? Either way, the 330CI managed to maintain a 50-50 weight distribution, which also helped with the handling and overall feel of the car. The key to these cars is knowing what to look for and to know what issues to watch out for as well. Though the M54 is known to be a pretty strong and reliable engine, like most things, there are those common issues to look out for. The most common things with the M54 that might give you some grief are the water pump and thermostat, basically just a cooling system in general, the valve cover and the vano seals, which is pretty important to know if you're looking at getting one with some miles on it which brings me to the next point these cars can be scooped up for as low as five thousand dollars with anywhere between a hundred thousand and hundred fifty thousand miles on them which is right around that same time when some of those issues start to come into play for some people that's a walk in the park especially if you've been around older bmws in the past and don't mind working on them i truly think that it's still a great car to start off the list because they can be picked up for that low and then there are some absolute gems out there yet that have been well taken care of from their previous owners and they just want to kind of get rid of it. But just know if you want one with the potential of no issues and lower miles, you're probably going to have to pay just a little bit over that $5,000. Sticking with the six cylinders, but a little different configuration, we get to car number two on the list. It's going to be the Infiniti G35. 
almost like the forgotten child of the VQ cars. Not saying there isn't a ton of them out there and a lot of enthusiasts that enjoyed them. It's just like one of those things when searching around for cars, it just seems to kind of get left out of the search history. Typically, everyone will gravitate more towards the 350Z. One of the main reasons is due to all the speculation of what horsepower these cars actually had. The first years of the 350Z had right around 287 horsepower near the end of the production with the motor upgrades and stuff like that that came with it. It was right around 306, with the G35 had around 280 or so when it first came out. And now there's really nothing out there to really say what happened and when it all happened but your best bet is to go for one of the later year G35s when the horsepower numbers match closer to the 350Z, which again was right around 300 or so. A lot of people say that the G35 actually had 300 horsepower right out the gate and that Nissan and fitting, they just kind of forgot to mention that, but there's really no proof of that anywhere out there. So believe what you will. For the most part, these cars are pretty much bulletproof and can handle a ton of the abuse that's thrown at them. These cars litter the drift tracks along with their 350Z counterparts, and they do really well. The only thing to really kind of look out for is the oil consumption and oil leaks that come with these things down the road, which don't really tend to show their ugly faces until well over 100,000 miles or so. They also look incredible slammed on their nuts or, you know, paired with some air suspension, which makes it a fantastic car because it really can cover all the bases. Rear wheel drive, available in a manual, it's a coupe, it's a V6, it looks good, and a ton of aftermarket support. It's Christmas! Do you wake up every Christmas morning expecting some cool sh just to be disappointed? Well, not today. The 12 Days of Deals are here, and they are live right now. Now, this year, you don't have to get the same pair of underwear and socks you always get. This time, it's going to be gift cards, merch, and maybe even wheels, tires, suspension. But anyway, don't miss out on the 12 Days of Deals live at FitmentIndustries.com right now. Happy Holidays! Car number three steps away from the six-cylinder engine and, well, cylinders as a whole, in fact, because we're, of course, talking about the Mazda RX-8. Is it a little biased because I own one? Maybe, but who cares? Hear me out. The Mazda RX-8 gets a bad rep, and I think that's pretty well known, but I'm calling bullshit as they can be an incredibly fun car that can be picked up for absolutely dirt cheap right now. The RX-8 gets all the hate from its Renesis rotary engine. Even though it's still in the 13B family of rotary engines that we all know and love, it's a bit of a problem child because of what Mazda tried to do with it. However, most of these issues can be easily averted with a few modifications and a little more maintenance on the side. These cars need oil, they need cool temperatures, and a strong ignition. Give them all that and they'll treat you well. Upgrade your cooling, get a nice AEM cold air intake, install a zone adapter with a reservoir kit, premix your gas and upgrade your coil packs, and you'll be pretty much good to go. They may not be the fastest car in the world, and yes, you'll have to do things to this car that you'll never have to do to any other car that you'd ever own, but they are incredibly fun. They're a perfectly balanced car technically are like a mid-engine platform, especially from a car in the early 2000s. The suspension geometry is quite unique, and most of all, you get the rotary sounds that sound absolutely amazing. The S1 generation may be the least desirable because it was the first generation and doesn't get all the fancy facelifts, but it's the most affordable right now. The manual cars come with a little more horsepower and a six speed manual transmission. And I've absolutely loved mine since I've owned it. And I think it's a platform I'm gonna stick around for quite some time. And I'd recommend anyone who's looking to get into a rotary car that doesn't wanna go spend 30, 40 grand on an FD right now, go check out an RX-8 first. Suggestions would be bring a friend who knows about rotary engines, specifically the Renesis motor, and make sure you get some compression numbers beforehand of anyone that you might be looking at. Even though the prices are on the climb for these, you can still find a decent one for right around $5,000. And it's not very uncommon, you know, that people just ditch these things because they think the motor blew up. They hear the horror stories and they something happens where they're like, ah, it's done. But all it needs is to be like unflooded or it needs a new starter. Uh, trust me, I've seen it happen quite often. And in that case, you can get a quite decent RX-8 for an absolute steal. You know, it had to be on the list. I think if it wasn't, the world might just end officially. The Mazda Miata really speaks for itself. The happiest little car to ever exist on the face of the earth. And rightfully so, because they're an absolute blast. Now, I myself might not fit in one, but you know, that shouldn't stop yourself from scooping one of these up. If you're looking for a fun rear wheel drive roadster to bomb around on the weekends, an NA or NB Miata can really be the perfect car for you. And I think it really comes down to the expectations. Everyone just kind of knows and expects what these cars are. They are really low horsepower, but they handle like a dream. Just, they just take everything that their drivers throw at them. 
The one downside, however, is that these things seem to get passed around more than the cheesy potatoes at Thanksgiving or Christmas. And finding a clean one tends to get a little more difficult as these years go on and prices still seem to go up. However, they are out there, you can find them, and they're an absolute blast. To close out the list, I had to make Sean happy since I truly think every video he has ever done since he started here has included some sort of Mustang in some sort of list. So, you know what? We have to throw it in there as well because it works and we're gonna do it. The 94 and 95 Ford Mustang with the old five liter V8 to be specific. Now, these things aren't going to handle the absolute greatest and they may take a little bit to look like really good, but you know what? They already have a V8, it's rear wheel drive, they come in a manual, it can do some nasty burnouts and go kind of quick in a straight line. And if that's what you're all about, like our boy Sean is, then by golly gee, you got yourself a great deal, don't you? The 94 and 95 are the first year of that body style, but the last years with the older engine, which in the grand scheme of things, doesn't make them the most desirable because a lot of people want the newer engine with a little more horsepower as the older ones don't produce as much as the later years. But it also means that the prices will stay lower because not a lot of people are looking for them, which is nothing wrong with that. You're still gonna get around 215 to 230 horsepower, which when compared to everything else on the list kind of falls right in line for that price point. So there you have it. There's our five picks on some of the best rear wheel drive cars out there for under $5,000 right now. If there's something not on the list that you think should have been, let us know down in the comments below. Maybe we might just have to make a part two to this. But in the meantime, don't forget to check out wheels, tires, and suspension over at fitmanindustries.com. And of course, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. You can check out the S2000 giveaway that's getting wrapped up right now. And of course, we got the 12 days of deals going on. It's a whole crazy time over here. And we're all Christmas up, you know? You go check it out, fitmanindustries.com. I'm Gels. We'll see you later.